Shea Bear 1000 here. I just put an upper and lower ball joint on this 2003 Toyota Tacoma. But as you can see, hopefully, there is no grease zerk on top of that. Just got a plug or grease fitting, whichever you prefer. But they're actually called grease zerks. I have one up on top. But I don't have one down here. It didn't come with one. The only thing it came with was that little plug right there. So, I was going to take the one out of the top and put it in the bottom after I greased it. Then I was going to put it in the bottom and grease it, but the wrong size. I don't have any Zerks laying around. So, I'm going to show you how to grease this thing if you don't have any grease fittings. Or, if your vehicle, like this one, came out of the factory without any any grease fittings, okay? It was, they're sealed. So after a while, that grease is gonna go away. You know, it breaks down and whatnot. So how are we gonna grease that with no fitting? Well, I'm gonna show you. It's really cool. Uh, actually, a lot of uh, shops don't even know about it, but I'm gonna show you. I've always had one. I thought I'd do a, a quick video for you. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay guys, this is what I'm talking about here. It's called a needle grease gun injector, or you can call it a grease gun injector, grease injector, hypodermic grease injector, whatever. But if you look it up as needle grease gun injector, this is what you're gonna find. This is a cover. Now what this is, it's kind of like a, hypo, it, well it is a hypodermic needle with the grease zerk, that's Z-E-R-K, on the bottom of it. Let me see if I can get this to focus. See, the tip of it there. Okay, so that's what it is. Now, let me talk a little bit about this. You can fast forward if you just wanna see how it works, but I wanna explain something to you and uh it's kind of important for the people that can't do these things themselves okay guys now like i said a lot of shops don't even know about this thing all right and if they do they don't want you to know about it because i'll tell you why this also works on sealed bearings i'll throw some pictures up here in a minute and show you what i'm talking about your boots all right on your transaxle on your CV joints it's actually your CV joint that the boot is on it's rubber they got those metal clips okay that go around and they tighten and you they're one-time use okay it's like a little clamp I guess you'd call it you got to cut them and take them off there's no way to grease that axle that's what they're going to tell you Yes, you can. You can grease it with this thing. A lot of guys that do know about this will say, well, that's going to take a long time for that grease to come out of there. Not really, because it's the same It's the same size hole that what comes out of your grease zerk anyway. So, now, the same way them ball joints. You got sealed ball joints, you can't grease them. That's what they want you to think. You can use this to grease them. Now, they don't want you to know about this thing because if you go to the same mechanic all the time, all the time, eventually you're going to need grease in that rubber boot, right? In your CV joint or, or your ball joint or here's another one, your tie rod ends. You can't grease them. They're going to wear out. And the shops don't want you to know that you can prolong that because with this tool here when you bring it in for an oil change and lube that means they have to grease those 
Well, if they don't have this, they don't have to grease them. If you let them know about this thing, they're not going. Some of them's not going to like you because now they got to just keep adding grease to it for free, really. I mean, because that's included in an oil change and lube. Okay, so if it doesn't have a fitting, they don't have to grease it. But if you take them in this thing and tell them you want them greased, they have to do it. Okay, I ran my own shop for 10 years. I, I know, I own my own shop. Uh, of course, I never, you know, I just always had one of these and always used it for my customers. Uh, because I felt that's the right thing to do. Um, because essentially they're greasing that thing and keeping your your parts going for a long time to where if they wear out like let's say a cv joint goes a lot of places a lot of and a lot of people don't know this the cv joint itself costs more than the whole axle 95 percent of the time uh you price a cv joint it'd be 150 to 180 dollars certain vehicles i'm just giving you an idea you can buy a whole axle with both CV joints for 120. You see what I'm saying? So they want because they're they're getting markup on prices. So they, on on your parts. So they're making money on your parts and on the labor. So that being said, they don't want to keep that thing going. They want this. They want every few years. They want to sell you. A new CV joint for 150 bucks and you got to take you know the whole steering knuckle out and everything like that to replace it okay same way with the boot check your boots your rubber boots that go around your your CV joint um, if they start cracking or whatever you, uh, most of the time not all not everyone but most of the time you can buy just that boot now you still have to take that axle out to replace that boot but once that boot rips, your grease is going to go away. It's it's going to fly out, and you're going to have grease everywhere. And now you're running with no no grease, and it won't take long for that axle to go bad, that CV joint to go bad. I've actually had people bring their stuff to my shop. Uh, in fact, there was one gentleman brought his stuff, his uh, vehicle to my shop for a, uh, a tie rod in. I just had these replaced two years ago. I said, well, it should have lasted longer than that. And when he had it done, he had his ball joints, tie rod ends, all that replaced, right? And I got to checking every one of them. The rubber was sliced on every one of them. So what they did, and they were, they were non-greasable. What they did, this person had cut, and their CV joints had cut the boots and everything, so the grease would go away quicker what an asshole and he never would tell me who did it um so anyway i explained to him about this um now a lot of guys on their cv boots they'll just make a slice in it stick their grease gun in there and grease it that's fine and dandy but that thing's always going like this right twisting and stuff that that cut that slice is it, it's just like a crack it's just gonna keep getting bigger and bigger so you might as well not even grease it because it's not even gonna last as long as if you just left it alone now this it being a hypodermic needle it's a nice round little hole that the grease cannot come back out of it just closes back up kind of like when you get a shot you know it just closes back up the same way with that rubber but if you get a, you know, you get an inch long slice in that thing, come on, man. It's just going to keep ripping. It's a slice. It's not a perfect hole that's going to go back together this small. This thing cost, I, I just got this one on Amazon, $5.75. So next time you change your oil, you grease your stuff up that's non-greasable with this. And it's going to last, your vehicle parts are going to last you so much longer. Now, I'm going to show you how to use this. But like I said, guys, it's worth it to pick one of these up and tell them, look, I got this, you know, I want my ball joints and my tie rods greased. Well, they're non-serviceable. Here you go. Use this. They're going to act like they don't know. No, what is that? That's junk. No, it ain't. 
No, it's not. This is a lifesaver. They're not going to be happy to see that thing because if they do know what it is, they're going to go, shit. You know, they're looking forward to you bringing it back in six months and eating ball joints and tie rod ends and, and axles and all this stuff. Hand them this. If they don't want to do it, take it to someone who will because, like I said, I always had one of these. A lot of people didn't even know I had it, you know. If they had non-greasable stuff, I used this and I greased it for them and I told them, you know, look, I greased everything. Well, there, some people called on and said, well, they're non-serviceable. And I'm like, yeah, but I use this. I get this and I show them. This is how I service your stuff. And, and they couldn't believe. That's why they brought their stuff to me because, like, when I would change something for them, it seemed to last four times longer than anybody else. They're like, how are you servicing non-serviceable parts? It's because of this. And uh, I was honest with him, you know, I said, look, yeah, I, I could have just told you they're non-serviceable, non-greasable, and had you come back every year or two and replace some parts. You know, a lot of guys, they'll just replace one at a time, even though the top one's bad. They'll do the bottom one, and they'll wait till the top one goes bad, which is dangerous, you know. So anyway, I'll show you how to use this. Okay, so here, I'm going to show you. This is real easy to put on. You just put it on just like you're going to grease something. Put it in there until it sticks. Now, when you go in here, don't put a whole, don't put it in a whole bunch of different places. Just put it in one place. Just, just like that. Oops, got to hook my air up. I have a uh, regular grease gun that you squeeze like this with your hand, but my hand's not strong enough to do that anymore. Oops. There, I'll show you. See it squirting out of there? Out my hand for some reason. There it goes. And normally it doesn't come out like that, but there it goes. See it going in right above my hand. go now once that pressure comes out of there it'll stop coming out that hole okay so and I left my rag up on top of the truck all right now top one's already greased like I said once this once the pressure comes out it'll stop it'll stop coming out of there and you're fine you're good to go so let me get my rag wipe this off I'm gonna do the rest of the truck because it's ready to be done and I'll be back with you okay guys as you can see it's stopped leaking out now so it's ready to go let me get the rest of the other stuff and I'll come back with my two cents all right guys so there you go that little deal right there 575 on Amazon you can get these at almost any auto parts store um, they should carry these um, just ask them for it but I have seen them at I've seen them in AutoZone I've seen them at uh, Advance Auto, Napa, places like that I have seen them um, they're a little more pricey I don't know why but don't pay more than ten dollars for this thing if you can get it online for five seventy five you know so but yeah it'll save you a lot of money in the long run um, I recommend this highly like I said uh, a lot of part guys don't want you to know about this so anyway <clears throat> this is screwed on here I'm gonna just screwed it back on I was gonna take it off to show you 
that's why it was leaking there because I didn't have that all the way screwed on so make sure it's tight make sure you screw this onto here just snug it up and uh, you're good to go so anyway I just don't like the way auto parts people do that I know my haters are gonna say why didn't you just show us the thing and show you using it because I wanted to explain to the people that can't get under there and do the stuff themselves what they can do to make money what they can do to look out for on scams um, my hometown we had a place called uh, Monroe muffler shock and whatever but it was called Monroe and uh, I had a lot of people bring their stuff in to me number one thing was always brake jobs I just had them do brakes uh, six months ago I just had them do brakes a month ago and and now they're grinding and they want to charge me again and they said because their their brakes were sticking because the caliper was hanging up and that's why it wore the new brakes down so much I took my car in there one time it was down to the squealers just making that that squeal noise took it in there and they charged me like it was like 235 bucks of course they didn't know me yet so I said okay because I need and then of course well we recommend you you do all this and it needs that and this thing's bad and you know I'm a mechanic I, I own my own shop I you know I kept my stuff up right so I said okay we're just gonna do it. we'll come back in a couple hours we'll have it done I said you're gonna do a complete front brake job rotors and everything two hours yeah, we're good here. Okay, so I come back two hours. It was done. I paid him 230 bucks or whatever it was. Took it back to my shop. Raced it up. Pulled the front wheels off. They never touched it. What they did do, however, was peeled that little squealer. It's a little metal tag. Tang. That goes over. And once your, once your uh, brakes get worn down so far, what that does is rub on your rotor. Makes that squealing noise to let you know look you know you're gonna need such a set of pads before that before you get down into the rotor and grind your rotor up all they did was peel them back so I took pictures this was before I was YouTube and that would have been a great video I took pictures before and after I took it in there I said you guys didn't do brakes I was charged for brakes if you was charged you did them I said no you didn't here's the pictures before and here's the pictures after well we can't go by pictures I said raise this thing up and you see what you guys did he was, he was arguing with me. He says, no, we're not, we're not going to do it. And I said, get your manager out here. Manager come out. I explained to him what was going on. He, he, act, he kind of acted like he didn't know, but you could tell he knew. I said, now I want you to get this thing up in there and show me where this work has been done. And I want my old parts. Well, we already threw them away. Well, it's only been like 20 minutes, so go get my parts out of the, out of the bin. He was like, all right, look, look here. We'll give you your money back and... I said, yeah, what about all the other people you fucked, you know? And, uh, well, a month later, they were shut down. There's a lot more to that story I'll get into later at another time, because that's a story in itself. A month later, they were shut down. And uh, I'm just, you know, I hate people like that. Or I hate when they do work like that. You know, that's not, you know. Well, and then he, you know, the first thing he started, well, it was misdiagnosed. Well, show me the old parts then. Misdiagnosed, that's their favorite thing. No, you, you tried to screw me. And then I told him, you know, I'm Marty from Marty's Motors. I'm owner-operator there. Things changed. So anyway, guys, there you go. Easy peasy. Like I said, you can use it on the sealed bearings with the little rubber. seal it goes just stick this in there squirt squirt some grease in there it'll last a lot longer uh, CV joints the rubber boots works fine so anyway guys there you go appreciate you watching thanks for everyone supporting my channel appreciate it don't forget to check out monkey 1000 and we'll see you guys soon Shea Bear the myth the man the legend it's hot out here I gotta go bye bye guys and take care